So hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Show and Tell Show with all of our friends together from the Penetanguishing Centennial Museum. We have Nicole Jackson. Hello. We have Jan Gadsden. Hi. And of course, from Heronia Museum, we have Genevieve Carter. Howdy. There she is waving. <laughs> and me, Nahani Bourne. So this week, someone has requested a little break from rock, paper, scissors. So Nicole and I are going to do a rousing game of rock, paper, scissors to see which museum goes first. Are you ready? Yep. One, two, three. Oh, okay, Penetanguishing Centennial takes it. Good for you. All right, what's your artifact this week, Nicole? Okay, so we went hunting. We found a few things, narrowed it down to one that we think is quite interesting and holds a little bit of notoriety. So, Nicole. All right, so yes, today the theme was local and handmade. So what we went, what we went with are these shoe packs, and a shoe pack is a waterproof laced boot. But these are the Gendron shoe packs, and they have right on them that they're from Penetanguishine. And uh, this was a well-known uh, company that made shoe packs, which were just a type of boot that really were great for lumbermen and surveyors. And they were actually, you could use these during World War I in the trenches. This is kind of a boot that you could use. And uh, the Jean Drong um, Shoe Pack Company was located on Main Street. And it started in 1885 and went to 1937. And these were actually donated from one of the descendants. And so they are kind of one of our prized possessions because they were quite well known around the area. But because people really use them very well, you usually don't find any in pristine condition. And this is quite done. These were all, um, hit, the leather was all hand done. Everything on here, uh, hand stretched, sewn, everything was done, hand done. And it's local. So. Can you show us the soles? What's on the sole? These are flat. They're, they're, they're basically like a moccasin. So oh. basically, eh? Yes. And that's all. And a lot of the shoe packs were actually quite, they're big boots. They were longer. Yeah. So these were quite rare because they're small. And I think these were not very well worn because they were part, like one of the family members had it. And I think they kind of kept it as like, sort of a souvenir from there, from the company. But right on the side, it has it right in there. It says Gendron Shoe Pack. On the front, it has Gendron Penetang, Ontario. Back and did, the yeah. Thornton Penetang machine. And didn't they become regulated issued footwear for World War I soldiers? Yeah, it wasn't, yeah. And that's what sort of brought some notoriety to the shoe pack. Very cool. Local wow. and handmade. Very so cool. Amazing. Genevieve, what do we got oh, over at Heroni Museum? I've got something quite a bit larger. I don't know if you can see this. I'll sit back and hold it up. It is a basket. And this basket was made by, unfortunately, we don't know who, but it was made by um, some women we were told who from Christian Island. Um, mm. It was purchased way back in 1913 or so by a woman uh, named Elizabeth Addison. She was from Toronto and she had a cottage on the 13th concession. Ah. And her granddaughter said that uh, women from Christian Island used to paddle over um, to the cottages and sell baskets and small souvenir items like quill work or beadwork um, um, boxes and things like that. So unfortunately we do not know who made this, um, but if anyone out there is watching this and you've got ancestors from Christian Island who, um, men or women who, who did um, who were artisans, uh, you can contact us and let us know mm. and to learn a bit it's about it. Yeah, it's in extremely good condition for the age very, of it. Very, very good. It was, and it was used continually by the family until about 1943 as a laundry basket. And after that, uh, it was passed down to the donor's aunt, who was a weaver, and she used to um, use it to hold her balls of yarn. 
And mm. you can see in the corners, there was a little bit of work, uh, a little bit of repair work on some of the, uh, here, and that was done by, by the weaver. So it's got it. It's still in very good shape. It is very good. Yeah, it's a little yeah. bit of work. You can see on the underside, on the inside, well, maybe it's hard to see, but you can see it's a bit dirty. A bit, yeah. It looks moldy, as if you could, wet laundry had sat in it. Mm. So, that's very good. Beautiful basket. Well, that's really cool. Both of our things. So, Penetang Machine Centennial Museum, what's our challenge for next week? Well, as we get closer and closer to the holiday season, and a lot of people are doing baking and a lot of cooking, we've decided to ask you to go with a, some sort of cooking tool. A cooking tool. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think we can do that. Okay. I think we can do that. I'm excited <laughs> for next week. Because <laughs> I love kitchen gadgets. Yeah. You yes, you do. I yes. do. You know I have yes, a kitchen I gadget know. collection. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you've seen so, it on TV, Nahani owns it. There you yeah, go. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I own a lot of gadgets. I've thrown a lot of gadgets away as well. Anyway, so we'll see each other same time, same channel next week. Yep. You betcha. Yep. Okay, bye. 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 bye.